13 News Now begins with breaking news. We have breaking news out of Portsmouth, a verdict in the Stephen Rankin trial. The jury has found the former Portsmouth police officer guilty of voluntary manslaughter in the shooting death of an unarmed teen. 13 News Now has crews at the courthouse. Let's go straight to reporter Eric King. Eric, tell us about the mood inside the courtroom when the verdict was read. Well, Regina, it was certainly very tense inside the courtroom as the jury filed in and delivered their verdict of voluntary manslaughter. Stephen Rankin found guilty of the lesser charge of voluntary manslaughter. Sally Chapman, William Chapman's mom, broke down in tears, and Stephen Rankin, the former Portsmouth police officer, sat stone-faced as he learned his fate. I want to bring in 13 News Now legal analyst Kevin Duffin to talk about this. Kevin, Rankin was charged with first-degree murder, but the jury had some options, and they came back with a lesser charge. As a former prosecutor who has tried murder cases, what do you make of this? Well, oftentimes when you charge cases, you charge the highest level that you believe that you can prove based on the evidence. But you always want to have other levels available to give the jury an out, so to speak, so that they are able to make a decision or maybe even come to a compromise verdict, which is what this kind of feels like it was. So this is a case where it seems like there were some jurors in there who may have wanted to go for higher charges. There's some jurors in there who may be did not, and after 13 and a half hours of deliberation, they came to a compromise of voluntary manslaughter. Yeah, the prosecution said he killed him out of cold blood. He testified, though, that he had to kill him out of self-defense. It seems that the jury found somewhere in the middle. Voluntary manslaughter is in the middle between those two extremes. Voluntary manslaughter, I guess for a law school definition, is usually referred to as a heat of passion killing. It's something that was not premeditated. It's something that was, the decision was made there and then on the spot, but it is in fact the killing intentionally of another person. That is what voluntary manslaughter is. So if he is saying, Officer Rankin is saying it's self-defense, and if the family and the prosecution was saying it's a cold blood at murder, voluntary manslaughter is sort of in between that. Now happening right now is the sentencing phase. Both sides are calling character witnesses. Walk us through that process. So the sentencing phase is for the jury to decide how much time that Officer Rankin should get now that they've decided that this is a situation where it's voluntary manslaughter, which carries a one to ten year range in prison. And so the defense is going to bring witnesses to show what a good person Officer Rankin was, how he's been a successful member of the community and has never been in any trouble, doesn't have a criminal record, doesn't deserve the high end of that range. On the other hand, the family for the prosecution is going to be able to say uh, what a lovely brother, son, you know, friend, relative that Mr. Chapman was, how he was never a violent person, how this is a tragedy and that they deserve to give Officer Rankin the full extent under the law. And so the jury is going to hear all of that evidence and then decide what they're going to do. Now, the Rankin's attorneys indicated that they would appeal. What options do they have moving forward with this verdict? Anytime you have a criminal conviction, particularly of a felony, you're going to expect an appeal under many, many different grounds. Insufficiency of the evidence is going to be the first one. They're going to say that the evidence does not support a voluntary manslaughter conviction. But there's also this issue where there was some contact with one of the jurors. That's sort of a, an, an interesting issue because that doesn't happen in every case. And you're expected to see that be part of the appeal as well, among other things that are going to be dreamt up by the defense team and try to get this uh, overturned. Yeah, because the defense team filed for a motion for a mistrial when it was learned that a family friend of the Chapmans had some sort of contact with a juror inside the courtroom. The judge, of course, denied that mistrial, but that's certainly something they could bring up during the appellate process. Absolutely. And the standard of review for that particular issue will be abuse of discretion. And I'm here to say that is very, very rare that the Court of Appeals overturns a judge's decision when a judge uses his or her discretion in deciding whether or not to grant a mistrial. So realistically, I don't think that that is going to be the issue under which uh, uh, this would be overturned, if at all. So he faces now one to ten years, right? He does, and ultimately the jury is going to have to decide how much time within the range that they're expected to give. They're going to get instructions for sentencing, just like they got instructions for guilt or innocence, and in those instructions it's going to say this is a class five felony carrying a sentence range of one to ten years. Jury, do your thing.
All right, 13 News Now legal analyst Kevin Duffin, thank you so much for your input. Again, Stephen Rankin found guilty of voluntary manslaughter. David, Regina, I'll send it back to you. Thanks, Eric. All right, stand by, uh, Eric, for more uh, from the courthouse. Uh, we'll check back with you later, of course. Uh, right now, Republican vice presidential candidate Mike Pence is campaigning in Hampton Roads. Pence is hosting.